Hi, I'm John from Off Road CC, and this is a ride review of the 2021 Carrera Fury. And uh, I've got to say, this is one of the spicier local trails that I have where I live. So it's going to be a really interesting little test to see how this 600 quid bike deals with trails that can make some serious hardware feel quite sketchy. And we're around. Oh, first thing I'll say is that he is insanely good value. Um, so this bike is £600, but for that you get an air fork, a drop of post. Oh my god! Oh, it's quite steep here. Uh, and a really very impressive kit list. The thing I will say is. The bike is actually very tall. I'm riding a large. They're a bit woolly on the geometry figures, uh, but whee! yeah, I can feel how tall that is. And also, it's a very bulky saddle. But these are classic budget bike complaints. So we are rolling on some WTB Trail Boss tires, which, although they're lightly treaded, at least they're from a quality brand, which isn't always a given at this sort of money. And although it'd be a different story if this track was wet. They're actually pretty good on this sort of stuff. You know, there's a lot of flat corners and general looseness. We out wide. Try to drag brake. Oh, no, running a bit wide. Yeah, they don't have much corner edge, but I reckon on trail centre, which is probably where this bike's going to spend most of its life, maybe cracking. Um, they aren't tubeless, which is one of the downsides, but again, 600 quid. Woo! <laughs> you can't, can't really be whinging too much. Um, play. Oh, look at that. Oh. And I think it's very impressive. Like the air fork, okay, it's not mega supple or particularly subtle in the damping, but it's doing the job. I'm not getting beaten around too much. And unlike most bikes at this money, it's air sprung, so you can alter it for your weight. Ah, see, that wasn't even too bad. One thing that does immediately, oh, look, I can use the dropper post here, a bit of a climb. One thing that does immediately spring to mind and back down it's how horrible these grips are oops tree down so no yeah the grips so i know it's a small thing but these are absolutely rancid they're like octagonal in profile non-lock on but i mean 15 quid get yourself a nice set of odi or what have you yeah and you'll be laughing ooh. Okay, so I'm just climbing back up now. Oh, thing is with this bike, when you look at what you used to be able to get for say 500 pounds, not that long ago, you felt pretty lucky if you were getting suspension and some disc brakes, never mind hydraulic ones. Whereas now this has got air sprung Suntour fork, 50 mil through axle rather than a quick release, which is a load more secure. And this thing tracks so much through better through like cross-trained rocky stuff where it wants to grab your front wheel and pull it over it's easy to wrestle this back out whereas with a lot of quick release forks not so much the other thing is the drivetrain so it's running uh, 1x10 Shimano Dior and it's superb so especially if you just started out mountain biking you don't want to be messing around with like two levers here trying to figure out oh, which gear I'm in now because this is why you usually see people are fresh to mountain biking you know, in your little ring at the front, because you got into there last time you rode up a hill, and then when you start going back down, you just click down here. You end up cross-training, it wears out your drivetrain, makes loads of noise, it's no good. This, one chain ring up front, but then you've got all the gear range at the back, thanks to an 11 to 46 tooth Sunrace cassette. So, that's basically pretty much what I run on my own bike, which is over 10 times more expensive. It's just bonkers. Shimano, so the shifting is like smooth, clean, crisp. There's no crunching. It's not quite as kind of crunchy and snappy 
as maybe SRAM's entry level offerings. This feels just as sweet as XTR, I've got to say. Okay, you don't get some of the lever refinement, uh, but you do get two way release on that, so down or down, so you can shift with this finger or your thumb at all points. And yeah, multi release on the way up. It's bloody amazing. Uh, the other nice thing is it's got decent cranks. So they're not square taper, which traditionally very prone to rounding out if you give them some stick. This has a proper through axle with outboard bearings. Again, it's safe for the weight, of which there is a fair bit. <laughs> there's, there's barely any difference in function between that and a much more expensive setup. So yeah, such a cracking little bike. It's amazing to think how far everything has moved on. And also it's the fact that a retailer like Halfords, who is the parent company of Carrera, are the ones doing this. So they're just putting a massive amount of buying power into delivering beginner or budget bikes. Uh, basically an incredible spec level. Yeah, blown away. Another thing is you can see like the cockpit is sorted. So I think this is running a it's either 50 or 45 mil stem. These bars are about 740 wide. It's all it's all more than enough. Um, again, Shimano hydraulic brakes. Then we've got 180 on the front, 160 on the back. I mean, they've got the great big clunky lever, but yeah, they do the trick. My only hate thing is this, as I use one finger brake in, as should everyone in the world. These are more than powerful enough to support it, but you'd have to shove the lever really far in to get it into a decent position. But yeah, man, I love this thing. 600 quid, I think it's an unbeatable. Okay, so now we're on the even more lovely fast flowing trails. A little bit slick because of the dust, which is an odd thing to say, <laughs> especially at this time of year, but you know, I'm not gonna whinge. All right, do the leap, whee! Oh, and this is quite rutted out and usually properly hammers you on cheaper bikes, but it's really not so bad there. I mean, this is the thing. This bike isn't perfect. I mean, it's got some, or oh, it's got plenty of upgradability. There we go, make that. It's got some upgradability, so you can put in a tapered steerer fork, because the one at the moment is straight inch and eighth. Uh, That'll probably be something you want to do, maybe if you do decide to upgrade your better fault in the long term, not an immediate need. The back end of the bike, however, does just still have a, oh, a through axle, or oh, sorry, a quick release, not a through axle, which means, yeah, you might struggle to find more quality upgrade wheel sets, but the stock one isn't too bad. Again, it doesn't say to be tubeless ready, but I reckon you could, whee! have a good crack with some tape and valves on your own. But the only other thing I would say is, again, and this is a complaint that I regularly level up bikes that cost four times as much as this, is that the geometry is very conservative. So I'm riding a large. I think the reach is around 450, somewhere around there. Uh, Corral don't actually give any, ooh, eh? any exact figures for that. They just give you effective top tube, which is, quite long but hey, I strongly suspect that's because of the relaxed seat oh bloody hell <laughs> relaxed seat angle that was a moment <laughs> but yeah I'd say six seven degree head angle another degree degree and a half off that'd be great 120 mil fork yeah steep seat angle that'd feel a lot better on climbs where it can I feel quite rearwards biased. Um, so it does run on 650B tyres. Some people think that's a downside. I actually think they're brilliant. And I'm not sure particularly what 29 inch rims would bring to the party on this bike. As you can see, it's like beautifully flickable and alive. Maybe if you're riding the sort of constant rough trail stenter stuff, then yeah, you might want something, yeah, with bigger wheels, but for this sort of stuff, this bike is, is fabulous. Should you buy anything else? Well, I really can't see why you'd want to. 
It's an amazing bike for 600 quid and okay, you want to convert it to tubeless. Uh, you probably want a slightly more aggressive front tire in winter. As it stands, it's fabulous. Oh yeah, and the horrible grips too. Get shot of those as soon as you possibly can. Your hands will thank you. But I am very taken with this. Some said, tomorrow I'm gonna to take away all your other shiny mountain bikes and leave me with this. I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I'd still be able to ride, have fun, probably ride all the trails that I usually ride, just a bit slower, maybe a bit more carefully, but what a cracking bike for the money. Anyway, if you prefer the written word, then a full review is going up on off.road.cc soon. Uh, if you've liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you really liked it, uh, consider subscribing where we do more of this sort of thing all the time. Anyway, bye-bye.